Another question. I went to a service in New Orleans. Why is service in Greek when we speak English? Well, they're Greek uh, immigrants to a country like America, which is unprecedented in the history of the tr history of the world. It's kind of it's kind of like Babylon, but far far more more complicated. So people come from all over the world here, and they uh, they do not come here as missionaries. They come here as whatever Greeks, Russians, whatever, and they want to maintain their identity in this melting pot. And so they also extend that to the most important thing in their life, which is divine services. Now that's something we need to understand we need to be not sympathetic to a resistance to mission which is the problem right that that occurs because they're in not in greece they're in america and so there needs to be zeal for mission but having said that we need to put ourselves in their position we need to put ourselves in the position of of somebody for instance who's from a greek village who doesn't understand much about the orthodox faith comes to america and over time, he realizes how much he values his own identity, history, language, culture, and orthodoxy, and he doubles down on what he what remains of that in the American melting pot and in a very secular culture, and that's good. That's not a bad thing to double down on that. The problem is that this, in the divine services, this comes into conflict with a true missionary, can come into contact with a true missionary outlook which is integral to the Orthodox faith. So, but having said that, there's a lot of value for an American to go to an ethnic parish and learn a tremendous amount about Orthodoxy in and through this, uh, th this uh, clothing, this vessel, which is being Greek, being Romanian, being Russian. Whether we like it or not, the Orthodox faith has come to us through these earthen vessels, through these identities, through these cultures. And if we're going to uh, go deep in orthodoxy, we have to also sift through that and sit at that at the feet of that and, and desire to understand that in its own context. It cannot be stripped easily. It will be all, much of it will be lost if it's just stripped, right? So I hope, hopefully I'm making sense here that you, there's there's a royal path here, which is that Yes, mission, yes, English, and there are plenty and many, many parishes that are in English, and it's good, and we need missionary work. But there's also something to be said about a presence in America or, or whatever country it is, Canada, whatever, where the, the identity and the, the, the vessel of orthodoxy that's come to us in, the, in whatever package it is, is maintained because so much of orthodoxy has been enculturated been it's become one in, part and parcel of the greek identity part and parcel of the russian romanian serbian identity you can't separate those things easily you're going to destroy them and so you've got to you've got to learn how to uh, love that and then live it in the american context and so it is what it is but that's re that's one of the reasons why you you're getting a greek parish in new orleans uh, i understand as an american very well <laughs> i've lived 30 years and I have many struggles with the language issue, but I've also come to some conclusions after 30 years that have helped me to understand it, I think, much more deeply and more in a well-rounded way. And I couldn't understand that initially. In no, in no, There's no way I could understand this early on, in the first five, six, seven years of being Orthodox. It took me many, uh, probably two decades, to really f fully understand the value of those earthen vessels, uh, the cultural and ethnic identities that have come to us.